Hey church, it's good to be with you today and before I get into the scripture that I'm going to share with you today I'm just going to pray to kick things off. God we just thank you for today, God we thank you that we're able to come around your word together um, to be encouraged and God I just thank you that by your Holy Spirit you will highlight to us personally and specifically what it is you want to bring out to us today. In your name we pray, Amen. Well, the scripture that I've chosen to share with you today is found in Matthew 20, verse 26. And there's just four little words that I really wanted to highlight today. So let's start. It says, not so with you. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. You know, not so with you. These four little words have always struck a chord with me. You know, every time I read it, the importance of the words still hold the same weight. And it's a reminder that we're called to live differently. It's a reminder to not become so accustomed to today's, to today's culture that we fit into it without even realising. You know, in society, it can all seem like one big race to the top. Self-promotion seems to be the game. You know, we saw at the start of the pandemic only a year ago that people were almost standing on each other to hoard and stock up on toilet rolls and hand wash. And you don't always have to look far in the world around us to see there's sometimes a lack in empathy and respect and kindness and love and truth and loyalty and honour sometimes. But not so with you. <clears throat> you and I are called to live in such a way that it infuses our society and the world around us with salt and light. It's a reminder to live with, open, with an open heart and open hands. To be the one in, who, instead of hoarding, is the one who goes round to their neighbours in the middle of a global pandemic and asks, instead, is there anything you need? Not so with you reminds us that we are called to be set apart to live lives that are consecrated, holy and different. You know, when you live with Jesus at the centre of your life, you should look different. You know, in your workplace, people should notice that there's something different about you. Because the way you live, act, talk, the conversations that you choose not to be a part of speaks volumes. You know, I often hear from my kids, they are allowed to say this, watch that, eat this, play that, and my response is always, well, that's great for them, but not so with you. As for our house, we have chosen to live differently. Not so with you reminds us that we're called to walk on water when others stay in the boat, to step out of comfort zones, to put yourself out there, to take risks, to refuse to compromise on your convictions, and to take your stand when others shrink back. We shouldn't be dictated to by how others are living their life and live for their approval, but instead we're called to live for the approval of Jesus. Not So With You reminds us that it's not all about you and me, it's about others and ultimately about Jesus. He is the goal, he is always the prize. It's about living a life that's so attractive to the point where it captivates the attention of society a life that provokes a response out of people. You know, Jesus' model of discipleship is that he brought the kingdom of God to people. He met their needs. He showed them compassion. He truly loved and introduced them to principles which led them to a fulfilled and meaningful life. And you know, we need to do the same. We are the church, the bride of Christ. And as his bride, we need to live ready. If you think about any bride in preparation for her wedding day, she does everything she can to look the best she's ever looked. She doesn't roll out of bed an hour before the ceremony and show up without having done her hair or makeup. She pays attention to every little detail. And as his bride, the bride of Christ, so should we. We should keep a kind heart and a sweet spirit. We should honour at every corner. We should rid our hearts of offence. We should frame our world with words that encourage, inspire and build up. We should be the light in the workplace. We should be the light in every area of darkness. You know, in your marriages, don't even look over the fence to see if the grass is greener. Stay on your own patch, throw some water on it and stick around long enough to watch it grow. 
Now we should take regular pit stops to check our motives, our words, our thoughts and our actions. Living with hearts that are fully committed, wholly devoted, not lukewarm, but all in. You know, I'm reminded again of um, another little verse in 1 Peter 3, where it says, To this you were called. Don't repay evil with evil, but repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called. You know, I just wanted to share something with you. You may have heard it before in the past, and it's called The Fellowship of the Unashamed. And it's said to be written by a young pastor who was martyred for his faith. So I'm just going to share it with you now. <clears throat> it says, I'm part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit's power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of his. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, smooth knees, colourless dreams, tamed visions, worldly talking, cheap giving and dwarfed goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits or popularity. I don't have to be right, first, tops, recognised, praised, regarded or rewarded. I now live by faith lean in his presence, walk by patience, I'm uplifted by prayer and I labour with power. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way rough, my companions few, my guide reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifices, hesitate in the presence of the enemy, pander at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up, until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up and paid up, preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, preach till all know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problem recognising me. My banner will be clear. And church, that's my prayer for you today, that you will stand out and that you will make a difference in your world today. I hope that's been helpful. I hope that has encouraged you today. I look forward to seeing you in one of our locations on Sunday. But have a great day. Love you, church. See you soon.